today's program. Statins, are they worth using for COVID therapy? And again, let me just give that disclaimer one more time. I'm not suggesting we try statins for COVID therapy. I'm not even suggesting that we do clinical trials on it. The reality is there's going to be a lot of that, and that information will come out over the next at least year or so. Again, the purpose is to help underline and hammer that discussion in that whether you're a statin hater or not, statins are not nearly so much about lowering LDL. Statins are more about immunomodulation. Now, this article was in the European Society of Cardiology Journal. It was a 2020 review article updating statins' state of knowledge and supports the rationale for their use in COVID-19. Immunomodulatory treatment in various infectious diseases. Although observational studies have reported improved outcomes in patients, there's just not conclusive evidence there. Drugs commonly used for lowering the level of LDL, cholesterol in the blood, that's what what everybody thinks about statins. But as we said, there's a thing called pleiotropic effects and the pleiotropic effect in this case is hidden, but hopefully, you know, this is an attempt to start raising awareness. So a self marker, if you look over at the, the images on the right, that little bluish purplish thing is supposed to be a, like a T cell, an immune cell. It's looking for a self marker. It looks at a piece of tissue and it says, oh, okay, you know what? That's part of us. So it doesn't attack. But in inflammatory diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, you get this angry looking immune system because it finds a part of our body and it reacts to it. In rheumatoid arthritis, it's part of our joints. In psoriatic arthritis, it's part of our connective tissue. Inflammatory diseases of the gut, it's in the gut, sometimes it's in the thyroid. So what happens is these immune cells misidentify parts of our own tissue and they read them as what we call antigens. And they say, you know what, we've got to attack that. Statins have been proven to be beneficial in patients with different autoimmune inflammatory conditions. They decrease systemic inflammation and oxidative stress, the imbalance between production and accumulation of oxygen reactive species. That's what oxidative stress is. And again, that's a whole nother bunny hole we could go down talking about the mitochondria, their use of oxidation to create energy and the oxidative byproducts that created a major part of the supplements industry. Most of the supplements industry focuses around antioxidant properties. And that's part of what this is all about. But let's get back to this topic, this information. Statins modulate the immune response at different levels, immune cell adhesion, antigen presentation, and cytokine production. You don't have to remember those, obviously. But again, for the geeks, and there are a lot of geeks that watch this channel, a lot of docs, a lot of biomedical geeks. Those are the kind of things that they're interested in. Adhesion, antigen presentation, and cytokine production. And it does have a beneficial effect on cardiovascular disease. Whether you're a statin hater or not, you know, it's hard to argue with that evidence. Observational studies have reported improved outcomes in patients with community acquired pneumonia or sepsis, blood infection, when those folks were receiving statins. However, studies on sepsis and ventilator associated pneumonia failed to demonstrate a beneficial effect. So again, there is significant evidence. There's no question that statins do have this pleiotrophic mechanism, a pleiotrophic effect, decreasing inflammation. There's still interest in promise in the context of viral infections, specifically avian influenza, H1N1, SARS, MERS. And again, that's why the issue comes up about SARS-CoV-2 or COVID. Avian influenza viruses, SARS-CoV-2, introduce an intense host response characterized by the cytokine storm, which can lead to acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS. That's what puts so many people with COVID, not just mild SARS-CoV-2 infection, but COVID, this serious infection. This respiratory distress due to the cytokine kind of storm is what puts them in the ICU. Large studies have reported statin treatment being effective in reducing influenza-related hospitalizations and deaths. So again, this is not 
throw away, let's ignore the opportunity or the potential with COVID. It's just that I don't cover COVID that much. My major focus here is helping people understand that statins are not what you might think. An association between outpatient statin use and reduction in disease severity among patients hospitalized during the 2009 H1N1 pandemic was also demonstrated. Some immunomodulatory therapies have indeed proven beneficial in patients with SARS, MERS, and COVID-19. Now, based on this evidence, the use of statin as an immunomodulatory treatment for COVID-19 may deserve some consideration. Potential benefits for COVID-19 therapy. SARS-CoV-2 enters the cells mainly through angiotensin-converting enzyme, ACE2 receptors. You remember all that discussion and then that concern that we had early on? There was an article that came out and said, you know, maybe you shouldn't use ACE inhibitors. Recently, most popular frontline drugs for blood pressure. As we got deeper into that discussion, no, that was not the case. Yes, it does impact, and the spike protein does latch to the ACE2 receptor, but no, ACE inhibitors are not a problem for COVID. Once in the cell, SARS-CoV-2 causes ACE2 downregulation, thus reducing its protective effects on various tissues. So again, they're starting to show where their logic's coming from on this question. And obviously, yes, it's available, it's low cost, it's certainly safe compared to COVID. Well, I'm not even going to go there. There's so many politics and emotions surrounding this issue. It does provide cardiovascular protection. That also has a lot of politics and emotion around it, but it also does some lung protection as well in these viral infections. Statins interfere with ACE2 signaling. They're known to experimentally upregulate ACE2 via epigenetic modifications. Statins have cardioprotective actions, and they should be taken into consideration, especially with people with SARS-CoV-2 infection. These are the opinions of the author of this study, authors plural, and now you're beginning to see why. These are not so much my opinions. I'm reporting the science, the evidence, and the opinions that are coming out of it. The lipid-lowering action of statins could treat the hyperlipidemia associated with the use of antiretroviral immunosuppression suppressive drugs in the COVID-19 infection, and hepatic function should be monitored closely. Conclusion, statins are low cost, available worldwide, even in low income countries, extensively tested, well tolerated, adjuvant, in other words, additional treatment, and continuation of pre-existing statin therapy could improve the clinical course of patients with COVID-19. Again, according to the authors, either by their immunomodulatory action or by preventing some cardiovascular damage even as well. New trials could provide evidence of its benefits in patients with moderate to severe COVID-19. So they end as almost every academic article ends with, with a reflection that, you know what, we need to do some more research. I lived in that world and that's the way I ended my articles as well. I just added this image from the plaque webinar to go back and help people recognize again, you know, as much as we've said it, there will be people that are not connecting the dots. And I understand. Why are we talking about immunomodulation for cardiovascular prevention? Quick explanation with some images. This is an artery. This patient died of a heart attack. What happened was the lining of their artery cracked. They had hot liquid plaque in this brown area. That leaked out. The hot liquid plaque caused a clot. The clot went to the heart and that killed this patient. Now, so this hot liquid plaque is a big, big deal. When you start looking at plaque, one of the things you begin to notice is most people think it's like, you know, hair lining a, a bathtub sink drain. That's not the case. It's actually LDL and other things that get stuck under the lining of the artery wall, under this lining right here. As you can see, it was under here. Here's another area with hot liquid plaque, and you'll see multiple throughout this patient's arteries. It's a systemic issue, and guess what it's caused by? Too much insulin, too much sugar on a regular basis in the artery. It's also caused by a few other things as well. But the immune system, which we talked about before multiple times, recognizes this plaque and says, you know what, you know, it may not have a lot of external antigens from it, but this LDL is not where it needs to be. It's not where it's supposed to be. It's oxidized and we need to just get this out of here. So how does it get it out of there? Well, these immune cells like macrophages, polymorphonucleosides, different types of immune cells squeeze through that lining of the artery wall, come into where this plaque is and they start releasing enzymes. They start releasing things called cytokines 
lights. Those cause even bleeding within this area. They cause more immune cells to come out. They cause release of cytokines. And again, if you get too much of this bleeding in there, you get that too many cytokines and this lining cracks. This is what you get. That is by far the most common mechanism of heart attack and stroke. And guess what? It's not just that one fatal, perhaps, heart attack. This can happen on a microscopic basis, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for decades. That's how your heart muscle tissue and your brain and your eyeballs, you know, the back of your eye and your kidneys, all these tissues with this process going on on a regular basis can start to look microscopically like Swiss cheese. So the inflammation of heart attack and stroke, the inflammation of cardiovascular systems is a key issue that's just not managed, not even recognized that well. It's only been over the past decade or so that docs have begun to accept Why wait for a disease and hope for a cure? I used to be an ER doc. My name is Ford Brewer. I quit ER after a few years because it was just so frustrating. Most of the things bringing people into the ER are things that should have been prevented, including heart attack, stroke, number one cause of death, number one cause of permanent disability. People think that you're just going to have those and that they're not predictable. Both of those are wrong. You, they are predictable and you don't have to have them. Usually it's lifestyle. Lifestyle is more important than supplements and even prescription drugs and even stents and surgery. But the current times are tough. Major financial impact with the lockdowns that most states have been going through. We've been working on a way to make this much more affordable with a subscription process. And that's exactly what we're announcing today. We've got two levels. One is the silver membership where you get access to our courses, a private webinar each month, and access to our supplement store, and supplement recommendations and prescription. Or I would suggest even more so, the gold membership. You can get a script for a Freestyle Libre and find out what your blood sugar metabolism's doing on a daily basis. And you can get a lab order for inflammation, OGTT, and insulin survey. You can also get a 30-minute one-on-one with me. So I'm looking forward to seeing you. Cost is no longer an excuse. So if you're interested, go to go.prevmedheartrest.com slash prevmed subscription or call us at 859-721-1414, 859-721-1414 or email us at myhealth at prevmedheartrest.com. Looking forward to seeing you. Thank you.